Hello guys and welcome to the first part of the energy tutorial series. In today's episode we're going to be going over some of the basics we need to know for each of our different energy blocks. Which in this series we're going to go over a generator, a storage and also implementing it into different machines that we may have already created such as a custom furnace or other type of machine. So let's get started. first thing we're going to do is create something called an energy storage. This is not the energy storage block, but is in fact something that all anything that has energy requires. As obviously anything with energy needs to be able to store the energy. And this is the thing that has all the functions used when storing, receiving, transferring energy and such. Forge already has a built-in one, but we are going to be making our own one that has a couple extra functions in it. So inside our tutorial mod package, create a new package called energy, and we're going to create the class of custom energy storage. This is going to extend the normal forge energy storage, so it extends energy storage from net.minecraftforge to energy. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a lot of the functions and super off of them. So call control and click on this energy storage word and it'll take you into the class. I'm going to take four of the constructors, so copy them, and paste them into our custom energy storage. Hover over and click change to constructor on each one. And instead of this, change it to super. In this final function here, we want to copy the previous one, but change the zero to the word energy. So basically we're using the same functions as before. With receive, extract, receive energy and res extract energy, we're just going to return the super. We also need get energy stored, get max energy stored, can extract and can receive. Everything here returns the super. And now we are going to create two of our own functions. This is the reason why we created our own class in the first place. As a lot of the energy stuff requires you to use NBTs, which are Minecraft's way of storing data inside of blocks. So we need our own two functions for read from NBT and write to NBT. So public void read from NBT, the NBT tag compound called compound, and write to NBT, public write to NBT, and also NBT tag compound called compound. Firstly, in write to MBT, we are going to set, if we hop, go back into the energy storage class, there are these four variables, energy, capacity, max receive, and max extract. We are going to write them all to the MBT by using the function compound.setInteger, the string value of the, na the same name, so energy, and the value, this.energy. Do this for each of the values. In the read from MBT, we are going to set each of these values to the MBT values that we just set. So basically when we leave the game, it will write to MBT. Then we rejoin the game, it will read from MBT. So this.energy equals compound dot get integer energy that we just wrote in the write to MBT. So do the same for each of the other ones. and we're going to call these functions later. So that is the custom energy storage, and we're going to use that to implement energy into any block. All the energy stuff is mostly going to be done inside of the tile entity, apart from some things in the GUI. So I'm going to create a custom tile entity here to explain to you how this will work. To implement energy, we're going to be using the capability system, the forge capability system. I'm going to take a tutorial tile entity called tile entity um, energy tutorial. In the coming episodes, we will actually create some blocks and I will show you how to do that. But this is going to extend tile entity and every block that we use energy with will also implement itickable. As itickable, it makes sure it's the net.minecraft.util.itickable. 
that function will have the update function. And that is something that runs every tick. And we need to be checking the energy value to see if it's increased or decreased every single tick. And also um, changing and modifying the energy. So to actually get the energy, we're going to need to be um, using capabilities. Forge has a built-in capability called energy, which is what we're going to be using. And there's two functions that we need. Get capability, but this will only run if the function has capability returns true. So firstly, in has capability, if capability is equal to capability energy dot energy, then return true. Else we're going to return the super. So we're saying that it has the energy capability and it can use some of the stuff. And in get capability, if capability equals capability energy dot energy, we are going to return this T here just means an object, any object, so return T. And then we're going to return our energy storage, this dot storage, which is something we haven't created yet. When using energy, we will create um, a custom energy storage. So private custom energy storage storage. And then we equal it to a newer one version of it. And we can use any of the functions, the capacity, if you just want um, to set a certain amount of energy in the storage, such as like 100,000. And you don't care about how much can go in or out. Max transfer will mean that the in or out value that you set will be the same for both in and out. This third one you can set different in and outs and this fourth one will have any some amount of energy when you place it for now i'm just going to use the first one as i don't care how much you can go in or out at one time you can set this to any value you want i'm going to put 10,000, and then here in the update function we can manipulate the amount of energy in the storage you can do this dot storage dot receive energy and the amount of energy it can receive so let's say 100 so it's going to receive 100 energy whatever unit you want per tick and for the most part this simulator will always return false as we actually want to do what we're writing you can also do this dot storage dot extract energy so we could say 200 and so we could do something like when our furnace smelts um, an item it wants us to it wants to reduce by 200 energy or while it's smelting it does 200 every tick whatever you want to do you can manipulate energy using the storage so that's gonna be it for this tutorial this is a basic introduction to energy in the next tutorial, we are going to be going over an energy generator. So if you're looking forward to that, leave a like down below and subscribe so you're notified when I upload the next part of the tutorial. It'll probably be in a few days. So thanks for watching. My name's been Harry and goodbye.